Hello, this video will be a quick overview of the Silent Night SKE 450 voice evacuation panel. In the first part of this video, I will be going over the panel itself, and at the end of the video, I will explain how the panel is normally used and if it is a good first fire alarm panel. So first of all, the utter enclosure is around 16 inches wide, 26 inches tall, and 4 inches deep. Uh, for exact measurements, there will be a link to the manual in the description. Other features on the panel itself, there are some ventilation holes on the bottom and at the top of the panel. Um, there's a big box sticker down the center, and this is a voice evacuation panel, so it does have a window um, for the microphone. Other than that, it's a pretty simple panel. Um, there are knockouts around the outside of it, all the way around and on the back. Uh, we can see those once we open it up. And there's a lock right there to open the door. And to open this panel, it does take the standard Silent Night key. Now the first thing you notice when we open this panel is there is something called a dress panel, which is basically another piece of metal that prevents you from actually seeing the circuit boards. Now one thing I have noticed with this panel is right here the door does touch it, so sometimes when you open it, it can lift it if it's not screwed in, and sometimes you have to press on it to get it to release. Like that. Um, it's kind of a weird design thing, but that's just something to keep note of. On the door, there's a sticker just showing um, the basic overview of the panel. And here are some more vent holes in the dress panel. Um, the only enunciation on this panel are these LEDs right here, and these are actually on the main board, and there's a hole in the dress panel so you can see them illuminate. And the LEDs are speaker trouble, alarm, microphone trouble, command 2 trouble, ground trouble, battery trouble, and the power light. And right below it, there is a hole for the microphone cable to come through. And you may be wondering what this hole right here is. This is actually for an option module, which basically gives it um, audio zones. Since this is a voice evacuation panel, um, this only has one output zone, but you can get a board right here that will actually split it into multiple. And the last thing on the front panel is the Shure microphone. And the model of this is a 596SK, which is actually a special microphone made by Shure um, for these panels. I'm not sure if they're using other Silent Night panels, but I know it is special for Silent Night. So now we can go ahead and open up the panel. And one more thing to note is sometimes the microphone cord can actually get stuck um, through there. So you have to be careful not to have it like this when you open it because you can't actually mess up the circuit board. And before you open it, you should actually push most of the cable back inside there so you don't break it when you open it. And normally these panels actually come with a screw right here and a screw right here to secure the dress panel, but this one doesn't have them right now. And the dress panel actually swings open on the same hinges as the door. And here's the inside of the panel. Um, it actually looks like the microphone's not plugged in right now, but um, here's the main circuit board. Uh, here's your main power transformer. And if you're wondering what these wires are right here, mine came with um, broken screw terminals, so I soldered on two pigtail wires since I didn't have replacement screw terminals at the time. At the top here, you'll notice a whole bank of terminals, and at the bottom, there's a smaller bank of terminals. On the left side of the board, there's no terminals or anything, it's just bigger components. Um, on the right, there are two buttons to manually activate your two messages. I'll go into that more later. There is a serial port for programming, which I will go into more later. And below that, there are two banks of dip switches for changing some basic settings. And right here is the pin header for if you have that expansion board I was talking about earlier. The battery wiring harness connects right here, and it just has two spade terminals and a white connector that plugs right into the board here. Now the microphone just simply plugs in right here. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look at the screw terminals. Now the first group of terminals are these four right here. These are for a remote microphone. Um, remote, plus, minus, active, and in. And the next group of three is an auxiliary audio input. And as you can see, I was messing around with an IP phone with that. Um, so yeah, you can actually hook this up to like a connector and play things through the amplifier. If we go on, we actually have an alarm relay. So when this gets an alarm trigger, it'll actually flip this relay so you can trigger other devices. And we have a trouble relay, which does basically the same thing, but it only activates if there's a trouble. Uh, and you can ignore that resistor that was just there for storage. And back over the center of the board here, you can actually see those lights that we saw earlier in the dress panel. Here's a closer view of the dip switches, buttons, and the programming port. 
At the very bottom of the board, we have a connector for the power transformer, which feeds power to the panel. We have the command to terminals. We have the command in terminals. We have the command out terminals. We have the speaker in terminals, and we have the main speaker out terminals. And at the very end, we have the microphone connector. And that's basically it for the inside of this panel. It's pretty simple. Um, the only thing left is basically this transformer. Um, I will warn you, this gets quite warm, and it is quite loud if this is not mounted on a wall. So that's just one thing to be aware of. And it does have pigtails to wire it up, so you're going to have to use wire nuts for that. So you may be wondering, should you buy one of these panels? The first thing I'm going to say about that is these are non-proprietary panels. So you can get documentation and you can get software for these panels for free. I will link that in the description. And another thing I will say is there is a very good deal on eBay right now for one of these panels, so I'm going to link that also. Now I am not selling that, so do your research on the seller before you order that, but it is a very good deal. Now you may be wondering, how do you control this thing? Well, it's actually very simple. There's two inputs, labeled Command and Command 2, and they basically just get hooked up to a relay or a NAC on your fire alarm control panel. So this will basically work with any fire alarm panel with a NAC circuit. This panel actually outputs 25 volts at 50 watts, so that's going to be probably enough for any enthusiast. So do I recommend this as a very first fire alarm panel? No, but I do recommend it as a first voice evacuation panel. Technically, this could be used without a main fire alarm panel, but it is highly recommended to use it with one. So if you're looking for a voice evacuation panel, this is a very good choice for a non-integrated panel, and it's not proprietary. Now there is a lot more to cover with this panel, but that's just the basics of it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Now if you have any more questions, just ask in the comments, and I will try to respond to you. Um, I will probably be doing a lot more videos with this panel in the future. This is just a quick overview of it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.